the viewing is back uh, with an eye in the mess. My personal and professional life was reduced to an emotional trouble. It was like a crime scene. Uh, it shot the glass everywhere and I could see my reflection uh, in terms of my self worth, in terms of the patients, in terms of whatever I had been, uh, both my personal as well as my work life. And it's a, it's a really dark place, you know, when you get to see your life uh, that you have built, that you have put in your strength, put in your tears. Look at everything, everything that you have uh, to build it. Never imagining a time where it would be dark in front of you, uh, broken and shattered. Uh, so, um, at that time, the first thing that came to my mind was that for me to drag a terrible relationship and for me to drag a terrible job beyond its inspiring date was a huge mistake. But I didn't know where I would go from there. I didn't know what would happen. Now what happens is, you know, when your relationships say you get into other relationships, and for me, I went through different phases. There was a fat, steady depression phase where I was just lying on the bed for hours, looking at the fan and thinking how the day would go by. I would wake up in the morning and I would feel this stab in my chest, but realizing that it's not a dream, realizing that it is the truth that, that I have to live with. And uh, again and again, whether it was dark, it would be coffee or stuffing my mouth with junk food. It was a very, very difficult time uh, to get over this entire feeling. But the point is, even if you're trying to numb your emotions, somewhere you get sick of being sick. It just becomes too much, right? So when that happened, I said, well, I need to pick myself up and I need to restart my life. And that is when I looked for a coach. When bad things happen to us, we ask, why me? Why did this happen to me? I did everything right. I put in the hours, I, I put in the patience. You know, I, I did everything that was possible. Then, then why did this happen to me? gave me an insight to ask the right questions. Questions like, what made you think this way? What could I have done differently? I've chosen to explore. What validation was I seeking? Why did I think and do things in a certain way? And those insights really helped me to understand that the biggest belief that was not serving my interests was that I was not good enough. And thinking that you're not good enough has many repercussions. You try to overcompensate. You try to please people. You try to go the extra mile. You're not able to say yes when you want to say no and you're not able to say no when you want to say yes. And that's a very, very difficult stage. And for me to get this inside that the reason all this happened was because I thought I was good enough. And I thought I was good enough. People in my life, the circumstances in my life, and each and every single thing that happened, because I thought that I was not good enough and therefore everything like a mirror reflected the same emotions, the same energy. So why does this happen? In our early years, in our early years way before our teenage, we are very vulnerable as children and we are exposed to experiences, we are exposed to a lot of things that happen in our family, with our siblings, with our teachers. And as children, we only have a very limited understanding of 
interpretations. So we take those labels and we take those experiences and we create our own interpretations of what we understand. And these are called emotional fractures because what happens is that we're born as a whole, but then somewhere along the line, we start understanding the meaning of life. We start understanding uh, how does life really work? What matters? What doesn't matter? What is my identity? Who am I? Am I right? Am I wrong? Uh, is this the right way to do things? Is that the right way to do things? And this is this is the foundation of where, whether it's guilt or shame or rejection or any other thoughts or any other beliefs, this is the foundation where they permeate into uh, our emotional structure. And then we build a whole fortress around it because we want to hide those uh, messy parts of us from the world and even from ourselves. So we'll show the world one part of us, a fraction of us, which is a nice shiny part that we're really proud of, that we think we can carry without any problems. But the part that is messy, the part that we're ashamed of, is very difficult for us to go out and show the world, so much so that we even hide it from ourselves. Because that trigger leads us to think of all those experiences and thoughts that make us uncomfortable. So this was really helpful and, and it helped me align why what happened happened and how this entire process really works. And at that point, after understanding this, the alignment really helped me because for me, it aligned to what I wanted to be my chosen path. And this is how coaching became my chosen path because I thought this is truly aligned to the kind of person I am and what I really want to do and how I want to contribute meaningfully. You know, a lot of people come to me saying that they want to love themselves. That is the number one point or goal that they will come to me for. And while they say, I want to love myself, somewhere in their heart, they also say, I'm not good enough. And this is the kind of conflict we're always living in. So it's important for us to understand the cognizant of the conflicts in our mind. I want to be successful, but I, can't, I can never make enough money. I want to really do well in life, but I come from a middle class background, so perhaps I won't be able to do that. You know, there, there are these conflicts in our mind all the time, and it's so important for us to understand that. Coming back to self-love, it's a process. It's very difficult to truly love yourself. You'll hear it in motivation talks, and you'll see it on banners, and you'll see it on you know, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and other social media all the time. Love yourself. Love yourself. Two words. But it's really, really difficult to do that. How does one do it? If you genuinely have to build some kind of protection against shame and rejection and those emotional factors that have been built over the years, and you've been collaborating that throughout your experiences in your relationships and in your work and whoever you meet, then you have to build compassion and acceptance. And these are two words that seem quite simple, but very, very difficult. Accepting yourself fully, be compassionate for each and everything that you do, including your mistakes. Accepting yourself with your flaws. Accepting yourself for the learning. And trying to build a home for yourself within yourself. So when we talk about the self, we look for connection, you know, all the time. But unfortunately, most of us look for connection outside, not inside. And the more we see connection outside, the more disconnected we feel within. Because the story has to start within. And we have to feel complete within. And until you switch on the connection of your heart self to connect with your flawed self, one hiding, the other waiting, you will never be able to feel complete. When I was a young child, I used to go for these long evening walks with my father. And uh, in one of the walks, I asked him, like daughters ask their fathers, 
uh, how many people know my potential? And he said, do you see the moon? And I was like, yeah, I see the moon. He said, when the moon shines, the world takes notice. Now, at that time, it seemed like a really nice, feel good sentence that I could live with. I mean, how much of the child understand, right? But many, many years later, I understood that you have to realize that you are the moon. The moon goes through different phases, goes through different cycles. It could be a crescent moon, it could be a full moon, but it always shows up. It dares, it's out there. Consistently over a period of time, it's always showing up with its flaws, whether somebody is watching or not. And I understood that lesson really, really late. Back in school, we used to get these uh, bowl stars for, you know, these stickers, for a job well done, for an excellent assignment, for getting good marks in a test. And I remember I used to wait for that validation. I used to wait for the next star and I used to collect them and I used to take them back home and feel really good about myself. What do we celebrate? We celebrate success and wins, right? But how many success and wins in the literal sense do we have in life? Instead, if we can celebrate our journey, if we can celebrate every time we stand up for ourselves, if we celebrate every time we take a risk, if we celebrate every time we think of doing something differently, every time we think of risking what we have, making a new start, giving ourselves a second chance. All that is also cause for celebration. So there is a need to redefine what is celebration worthy and what is not celebration worthy. And again, if they are able to build that connection with ourselves, it's easy, you know. Because you're mindful of how far you've come. You're mindful of how courageous you've become. You're mindful of how vulnerable you are to open up to people and to tell people your story and to hear their story. It's good to improve, but not to prove. This entire thing of wanting to prove and wanting to be perfect, there is no end to it. It only leads to mental exhaustion and disappointment. That doesn't mean that we should not try to do things. We should, but our benchmarks should be within. We should try to see what is it that we really have to learn. Look at each and every opportunity, each and every person, each and every interaction as an opportunity to learn, you know, to learn, to embrace, to understand what we can know more. But if we are proving to where is the benchmark and where is the end, there isn't any. So, if we can redefine this good girl, good boy, uh, perfect kind of an image to a more of an image of being ourselves, you know, where we can be flawed, where we can make mistakes, would that be easier? And would that be more long term? It would be more sustainable, right? Because Today I can do the best thing, but tomorrow if I don't have that, I'm still special. And if you focus on loving and living and making mistakes and laughing about our mistakes, if we focus on accepting people, if we focus on compassion, if we focus on building more bridges with people without judgment, would that be a much better place for us to collaborate, for synergy, for becoming better both internally as well as holistically. And therefore, we are, at any given point of time, we are seeing ups, we seeing downs. And you all know how to celebrate the ups, but even if the downs come, you should ask yourself, so what? So what if I didn't get that job? So what if I didn't get that promotion? So what? So what if I didn't get into that university? So what if I didn't get that relationship? So what? These things don't define me. This is part of the journey and I'm learning while I am traveling on this journey. And 
while learning and while doing things, we have to realize we will have our flaws, we will have to take risks, we will make mistakes, and all of us are flawed, but we're awesome. All of us are flawed, but we are complete. And it took me so many years to realize that all of us are flawed, but we're fantastic. We are flawtastic. So on that note, it took me so many years to realize this, but today, I request all of you to think about how flawed and fantastic all of you are. A big hand to all of you.